Hey, how's it going? Parker Welbeck here with Full Time Filmmaker, and today I'm going to be comparing my $14,000 Mac Pro to my $900 M1 Mac Mini to see if you can edit video professionally on something as small and relatively inexpensive as the Mac Mini and how it stacks up to this beast. And I'll be running tests on the latest version of Premiere Pro 15.2, which isn't fully optimized for the M1 chips quite yet, but hopefully they'll be rolling that out soon for even better performance than what these tests will show. But as you'll see, even without the fully optimized software, this Mac Mini is a killer deal for the performance you get at that price point. But before we dive into these tests, big thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Epidemic Sound has become a regular go-to source for quality songs and sound effects for our full-time filmmaker team as we create content for paying clients and tutorials for YouTube and videos for our online courses. With over 36,000 professionally produced music tracks and 90,000 sound effects to choose from, they have just about every genre of music and type of sound effect you can think of covered for just one low monthly subscription fee. And they have flexible plans, a personal plan covering all your licensing needs for social media and personal use like YouTube, podcasts, Instagram, Twitch, and so on. And they have a commercial plan that covers all your licensing needs for paid client projects. And yes, you can monetize videos with Epidemic Sound assets. You can also cancel anytime if you don't end up using the service, but if you're like our team, you'll find yourself regularly using songs and sound effects to quickly and easily add to the production quality of your videos. So click the link in the description below to try out their free 30-day trial to start browsing high quality music and sound effects today. But let's now dive into our comparison. So first off, my initial thoughts and impressions of the Mac Mini in comparison to my Mac Pro, this thing is tiny. Now the packaging of the Mac Mini is beautiful as always, but it doesn't really come with anything. So in order to make it usable, you're gonna have to buy a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. Now this particular Mac Mini I got is maxed out and I recommend at least upgrading the RAM to 16 gigabytes. But when it comes to storage space, you can easily get by with 256 gigabytes and just buy external memory, bringing your total cost for this Mac mini to $900. Now, a few drawbacks to be aware of, you only get two USB-C Thunderbolt ports and two USB ports, which is good enough for basic use, but compared to the Mac Pro's eight USB-C ports, you're definitely gonna notice the lack of ports once you plug in a monitor, a hard drive, an audio box, and a card reader. So you're probably gonna wanna pick up some dongles to give yourself some more ports. As far as specs go, as I mentioned, this particular Mac mini is maxed out at an eight core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of storage space. But again, you can get by with less storage space and save a bunch of money there versus this Mac Pro has 16 cores, 96 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of storage. Now the Mac mini doesn't allow you to upgrade the graphics card. It just mentions that it has an eight core GPU. So that's what you're working with there. And with the Mac Pro, I have 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. We won't dive into all the details of what those specs mean. I just want to let you know what the specs are on these two machines before we do the speed tests. Also, just my overall thoughts on the Mac Mini. I've been using it as my primary working and editing machine over the past five months. My family and I were living down in Arizona over the winter and I didn't bring this beefy computer with me. And I ended up editing about 30 videos or so on the Mac Mini in that time and worked on it every day. And I'd have to say that for the money, I think this is one of the best bang for buck computers you can buy right now for video editing. But let's now dive into the speed test so you can see just how different they perform and help you to decide if it's worth upgrading to something beefier or if you can get by with this Mac mini. So first test we'll do is open up Premiere Pro itself. I've heard that Apple's new M1 chips make simple tasks like opening up applications or browsers super fast. So I tested out opening up the same project file on both computers and the Mac mini loaded the project in just 12 seconds. And it actually did beat the Mac Pro that took about 16 seconds. So true to marketing, the M1 computers do indeed open applications very, very fast, even faster than this beefy Mac Pro. With Premiere Pro, Pro now open, let's test out a few editing tasks to see how they compare. Here on my timeline, I have some wedding footage I shot of my brother's wedding in Hawaii. This first clip was shot on the DJI Phantom 4 drone. Then I have some 10-bit 4K C70 clips and some R5 8-bit 4K clips. So this will give you an idea of how it handles a variety of codecs, specifically three codecs that I know Premiere Pro has a hard time with. In the past, I've run tests with red R3D 6K clips, but that's a codec that Premiere actually handles pretty well. It's these more compressed or newer codecs that it really struggles with. So we should be able to see these machines weaknesses with these codecs better. And ultimately, this is one of the most important things to consider when buying a computer isn't necessarily maxing out the specs as much as you can, but understanding what software can handle which camera and which codecs and catering what you buy to what you actually shoot on. So next, let's test out playback. As you can see, the Mac mini plays back the drone footage pretty well, but definitely see skipped frames and choppiness with the C70. But interestingly, even when I reduced the resolution to one eighth, the C70 70 footage still looked 
choppy, so reducing resolution doesn't really help on this situation. The Mac Pro, on the other hand, despite the tough C70 codec, was able to play back everything flawlessly without any drop frames. So this is a great perk you get when you spend the big bucks. You just got to decide for yourself if you'd rather make proxies for all your projects or spend a bunch more money for a faster workflow. Also, keep in mind, I threw on a color grade on all of these clips just to make it a little more of a realistic editing scenario. But moving on out of the next test is scrubbing through the footage. This is super important when you're going through hours of footage trying to find the best parts of a clip. If your footage doesn't scrub well, it can quickly turn a two hour process into a four or five hour process. And scrubbing through these clips, the Mac Mini couldn't scrub smoothly through any of the codecs at any resolutions, but even the Mac Pro wasn't able to scrub through any of them flawlessly at full resolution either. But it could, however, scrub through the DJI and R5 footage pretty smoothly at a fourth resolution. But again, even at an eighth resolution, Premiere wasn't fast enough at reading the C70's codec. So if I was shooting on the C70 and wanted flawless scrubbing, I'd have to create proxies even for the Mac Pro. Further proving my point that even if you get the best computer specs, if the software you're using can't read specific codecs very fast, you'll be bottlenecked by the software and will never be able to fully utilize the computer's capabilities anyway, which means you're better off either using software that is better optimized for your computer like Final Cut Pro X for Apple computers or not spending as much on maxing out a computer as you won't be able to fully utilize the specs anyway, or you could try and shoot on cameras that have easier to read codecs. Now, I love my C70, but that's definitely a drawback to consider when buying a camera and something I don't like about my C70 is the tough to read codecs for Premiere, which slows down my workflow. But moving on now to our next test, I wanted to point out something that I noticed after having used the Mac Mini for several months, and that is how laggy it is when doing common tasks like color grading and pausing and playing your timeline. As you see on the Mac Mini, every time I made a color adjustment, it takes half a second to obey my command, which doesn't seem like a big deal. But when you're making thousands of fine tune adjustments on every project, that adds up to a lot of extra minutes. And specifically the C70 footage, when I hit space bar to play the clip, sometimes it would take a full second or two to start playing. And again, playing or pausing clips happens thousands of times on a project. So that quickly turns into many lost minutes waiting for your commands to register. Now this is probably the biggest critique of the Mac Mini as a professional editing computer. Yes, it can work professionally and I made it work for many months, but having edited on faster computers, I got super frustrated having to wait for every single command. So again, proxies is gonna have to be a solution there. The Mac Pro on the other hand was instantaneous on all its commands, no lag on color adjustments and little to no lag on playing and pausing footage, even on the tough to read C70 codec. Moving on now to our next test was render speed. If you're having playback issues, you can always just render out the clips. So how long does that process take? Well, to render out a 10 second clip on the Mac Mini took 10 seconds and on the Mac Pro, it took four seconds. So about a 250% faster render process on the Mac Pro. Next test was applying a heavy effect like warp stabilizer. To stabilize a three second clip, it took the Mac Mini 125 seconds and the Mac Pro took 75 seconds. So only about a 60% faster process for the Mac Pro. So not much of a benefit with the Mac Pro on that one. And the last test is export speed. To export out a one minute video in the 4K YouTube preset, it took the Mac Mini 125 seconds and it took the Mac Pro 50 seconds. So again, a 250% speed advantage for the Mac Pro, which isn't a huge deal if you're only exporting out short videos, but some of my videos are over an hour long. So that would be a difference between waiting an hour or two and a half hours. So in summary, the Mac Pro is indeed much faster and less frustrating to use in most categories. So definitely if you have the money, getting a higher end machine will make your life much easier and save yourself a lot of time. But can the M1 Mac Mini pass as a professional editing computer? Absolutely. And I've proven that by using it as my only computer for dozens of videos. And though it was a little slower and more frustrating and requiring a lot of proxy creation at this price point, this is an amazing deal and something I'd highly recommend as a professional editing computer for people looking at that lower budget end. Again, I would recommend though getting at least that 16 gigabyte of RAM upgrade. There were a few times where I had multiple programs open and then Premiere Pro quit working on me because it ran out of memory, even at 16 gigs of RAM. So I imagine if you only had the eight gigabytes, it would get you into trouble quite often. So make sure to upgrade that RAM, then make sure to pick up a decent monitor with good color accuracy. This 32 inch LG monitor is one we've tested out and consider one of the best for the budget. And with that setup, you are ready to edit without breaking the bank. Now, a couple other notes, I do also own the M1 MacBook Air and I have edited on it as well. And it's pretty much the same specs as the Mac mini, slightly less powerful, but performs similarly. And for those wondering how the Mac mini stacks up to the newly announced M1 iMacs, the specs once again are basically the same. So I imagine the performance will be very similar to the tests I showed 
showed you today on the Mac Mini. The biggest difference is that the iMac comes with a beautifully designed monitor that will cost you about $700 extra. So your decision really comes down to, would I rather buy my own monitor for less than $700 and save money, or would I want it built into the computer and spend an extra 700 bucks? So if you're trying to save money, get the Mac Mini. If you like the design of the iMac, get the iMac. But there you have it, guys. Those are my thoughts on the new Mac Mini. Again, I think it's a bang for buck computer for video editing. Thanks for watching. And to learn how to optimize your editing workflow and learn how to edit cinematic videos, we teach a full editing workflow in Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro X, and DaVinci Resolve inside our course, Full-Time Filmmaker. So make sure to check that out. Links are in the description to join our growing community of over 17,000 video creators. Also on the website is a free one-hour preview of what the course is like, teaching our top 10 secrets to creating cinematic videos. And lastly, guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know. I watch you as you drive. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help but feeling Just loving this moment Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment Can we stay here together? If I could stop the time Don't you know that Forever